everyone and welcome back to It's Canyon. I'm Sophie and today I'm going to walk you through the eight affinity tools that will generally make your artwork faster, smoother and hopefully more fun. We're going to be building this book cover together, uh, book mock-up cover together, uh, whilst also learning how the new studios work, how to set up your own custom studio, uh, how to customise your toolbars, uh, masking basics, image trace, the type tools, guides, and the lastly, the warp tool. Uh, these are going to be quick um, overviews, so I'll be washing through them, but deeper tutorials are coming soon. So let's jump in to Affinity. The new Affinity app has all three of its original personas now fixed inside its one app. So at the top we can see vector, pixel and layout and every time you click into one of these the dynamics will change with regards to the tools and also the panels on the right hand side as well as the toolbars at the top. So this is great if you're an artist like myself and you move across the pixel layer, the layouts, the vectors and this is just a fantastic new feature that Affinity have brought in. And because I work across all of these different personas, which are now called studios, I actually really would benefit from creating my own studio and we can now do that. Let's go ahead and create our own studio. So up at the top, let's click the three little dots. You can see the other studios that are in here. I have them all toggled off, but if you toggle them on, you'll be able to see them appear in the uh, panel with the others as well. So let's just go and toggle that off. All right, we're gonna go to Create Studio. And here we're just gonna rename the studio, whatever it is that you wanna call it. We're gonna give it a color. Now we're gonna clone it from an existing studio. I'm gonna go and select Pixel because Pixel is the one that I use the most. And I'm gonna make it a duck because I like ducks. Anyway, we create and that's it. Now from here, we can go on to customize the toolbars. Up at the top, it's blank at the moment, and I wanna go and customize it. So we just click customize. We drag in the new tools or the tools that we would like to appear up here. I would like the align if it does it for me. There we go, nope, drop it in, yeah, there we go. Align, I also would love the split view. I also want the uh, invert selection. So as you can see, you can really customize these to the tools that you use the most. And that is as easy as it is. On the left hand side, we've got the other toolbar. If we click the buttons at the bottom, it opens up yet another section of tools that we can customize. I know that I really want to bring in image place. So I'm going to drag it and drop it there. I know that I don't like the crop tool, so you just click it and drag it out. And then the last one is the perspective warp, which I love. As you can see down at the bottom, it's sitting here, but I actually want it in the panel that is closest to where my document is. So just like that, we can go and create our own custom studio. If, for example, you can't see your custom studio up at the top here, what you do is just click the little buttons and you can drag your studio up to wherever you want it to appear in the panel above. Let's move on to masking. Let's bring in our image that we want to remove the paper background from. Click and place it like so. I'm also going to duplicate the layer. I, I do have a more in-depth tutorial about how to remove paper textured backgrounds. Um, so I'll leave that in the description below and in and above the screen now. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and select the flood tool. I'm going to make sure that contiguous is turned off and I'm going to select the whites as best I can. I'm then going to invert it and I'm going to select mask. Now just as a reminder, mask is super super simple. So black is cutting out and then white is painting in or the white is that the items that we can see. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have got the right color selected. So go to our brush tool. And as you can see at the bottom, we've got two uh, colors that don't exist. If you click press D on your keyboard, it will reset it to black and white. Remember black paints out and white paints in. Now I'm gonna speed through this and we'll come back in a second and we'll touch on image trace. So now we have our image uh, cut out from the background. We're gonna use one of the new favorite features, which is image trace. 
And basically, Image Trace turns your pixel art into vector shapes using hundreds of tiny generated paths. If we zoom into a pixel image, you can see that after a while, it becomes blurry. However, when you zoom into a, a vector version, it doesn't, it will scale infinitely. So let's go ahead and go to Vector, Image Trace. Now here you can see that the image has now been made up of hundreds and hundreds and tiny little vector paths. And again, if I was to zoom in, it doesn't actually get blurry anymore because it is made from uh, mathematical equations as opposed to pixels. Um, we can also see that we've been given a little toolbar here, which we can adjust and amend the uh, basically the, the details of the shapes. So we can do the threshold, for example, if we turn it up to 100% max, you can see that it sort of started to forget a lot of the color details and sort of just bulk merge uh, a lot of the colors into one another. And if we wanted to see what it looks like, the split before, we just click the split view and we can either drag it, uh, drag it about like this, or we can do the mirrored image, which is what I prefer. And you can see here the original image and this new image based on the, the sliders that we've selected. So if we go back to sort of uh, threshold, I quite like this one. And then the curve fitting tolerance is just, if you zoom, if we zoom in um, to this section here, uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. If you have a look at the little lines, what we can see is when we change the curve fitting tolerance, those lines either become a lot more sharper or they become a lot more rounder, as you can see with that. So once you've basically decided what kind of uh, image, vector image you want, we just click apply. Now, one of the best things about this is sometimes fixing those gnarly mistakes. Um, and actually, one thing I wanted to touch on is that in this layers panel, if you click the drop down, you can actually see all the lines and the curves and the shapes that have been created to basically recreate this um, image. So let's say I want to get rid of this dark, uh, this line section here. Let me just scroll up here. I want to get rid of this. What I'll do is then go to my move tool. And I also want to click at the top option here and just click objects. Now here it will allow me to click and if you click, if you press shift as well, it will allow me to multi-select sections that maybe I just don't want anymore. And then you just click delete and then that will remove it for you. So that is another really good, um, a really good item with regards to image trace as well. So now we have our image trace. If we look over to the left hand side and look for the titles, because what we want to do now is give it a title, we've got the artistic text tool, which if you click and hold, it shows you the two options. The artistic text tool, which is a lot more of a free form, kind of great for artistic uh, or creative layouts. And then the frame text tool, which is great for creating tidy little text boxes. Um, with the artistic text tool, we can also put it on a path and let me show you quickly how to do that. If I was to go to the shapes panel and select the circle or the eclipse and drag it out like so, and go ahead and create uh, and select the artistic text tool. When I get to this point, when I see the little wavy line and click, I can add text. And this is one of the great things about the artistic text tool and why it's so popular with creative layouts. But for now, what I'm gonna do is just create a very standard block text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click the artistic text tool, go to my uh, document and click and drag and drag out. And here I'll just simply add uh, the title of our little book. Now that we've got the image more or less done, I just want to go ahead and use my guides to just make sure that it's structured a little bit better. So to get to our guides, you go up to view and we click guides. Now I've already got some guides selected, which is in the columns here. I've got six columns by eight rows and I've got a margin of 20 mil. You can change these all accordingly. Now, if you can't see them, like you can't see them in mine, it's because I've got them turned off. So to view them, we go up to view, show, and here we can go column guides, 
or we can go to the other one which is just guides. Now I have a transparent background so you can't really see my grid pattern very well but if you go up to document settings and toggle off the transparent background you'll be able to see the guidelines here a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and just make these a little bit neater a little bit there maybe bring these up a little bit pinecone farm can come down a little bit and this can come down a little bit more so that is basically how you use the guides if you wanted to turn them off again you just go to view show column guides and they will disappear with our image now ready to go, let's open up our mock-up template and go ahead to the layers panel and select the cover image. We're going to hit our place image button, select the image that we want and place it inside that layer. Now we need to resize it a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change the rotation a little bit, make it a little bit smaller and I think roughly about there. Now the next step is to use the warp tool. So up in our tools panel, the little grid box, let's give that a click and we inside we get this little dialog box here. Now simply click and drag the corners. There is a lot more to this. I am doing this very quickly. Um, but this is basically the concept of the warp perspective which is live. And one of the things I love about Affinity is that it is live and they do it exceptionally well. So with that, I've now selected how I would like this to be. I'm just gonna click the X and voila. And that is exactly how I make my book covers for all my illustrations. I hope this video gave you a good idea on the eight top affinity tools that will help you work quicker and create cleaner art. If you want more affinity tutorials, uh, let me know below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And as always, go beyond and create within.